hi guys welcome to my youtube channel thank you so much for clicking today i look different because i'm at work and i'm on break so i decided to make this quick video um an update right um let's talk about my living expenses in germany as a student so if you're new here my name is fidaus osman i make videos on living and studying in germany go ahead subscribe share my videos like and if you are old here thank you so much for the support so let's get right into today's video so <clears throat> I've made this kind of videos like I've made it like once, but that was like last year. And today you guys um now I'm making another one like cost of living for international students in Germany for me, my experience. It's going to be different from city to city, from university to university, from an individual to another individual. It's going to be very different. This is my cost of living. I'm going to be very open, I'm going to like see it as it is, I'm not going to hide anything. Yeah so you guys know there's a uh, like kind of an inflation global inflation right now everywhere in the world <clears throat> things are like very expensive even in germany everywhere like things are really expensive now so obviously my living expenses are like has skyrocketed and yeah it hasn't been easy like that um for most international students like me we don't necessarily get support from home i mean we don't some of us some international students like me we don't get any support from home you work here and some money take care of yourself and pay your bills All right so let's just let's just start i'm going to give you a breakdown so let's start with um the salary let's say i'm not going to be open on how much i take in a month because right now i hardly work i'm working on my thesis love you know that so usually most of the time i'm in the university from like monday to friday mostly during the weekdays i'm in the university and i don't get to work but i have a part-time job that i get to do during the weekend as much as i get to work like 10 hours i get to work like 10 hours in in a week and this my work pays about 12.5 euros per hour so if i'm working 10 hours in a week 10 in a month that's like 40 hours so 40 hours times 12.5 that's about yeah you can do the calculation i can let me check here so 40 hours times 12.5 that's like 500 euros that's like below the average um salary one can earn because now the average um mean for a mini job maximum you could earn is 520 euros and i'm earning 500 euros so you ask how am I surviving? So I'm getting at least a 500 euros from <clears throat> this is my part-time job that I do because as I said, I work really less hours. I wish I could work 20 hours in a week. If I could work 20 hours in a week, I'll be earning like close to 900 like that. <clears throat> but yeah, um, as you guys also know, for international students, you can't work more than 20 hours in a week during school time by doing vacation you could work more than 20 hours in a week so take note very careful about that stick to that follow their rules they say don't work more than 20 hours do not do it but then you're allowed to work more than 20 hours in a week when like squeeze on vacation so as and now currently i'm working 10 hours in a week so in a month 40 hours and i'm getting around 500 euros good but the good thing for me is i'm also getting like support from the university Um, when i started my thesis i applied for these international funds internet from a fund from the international center for my university so what they do is they support like when you're in financial need or something like that especially when you're working your thesis or you have exams to write you can apply for this money that's my university i don't know for other university so this money they give you like 500 euros for five months so i'm getting that so I'm combining these two incomes. So as they are giving me this 500 euros, I'm also getting this more I can get from this part-time job. That's how I'm surviving right now. It's like hand to mouth, hand to mouth. I didn't even have any savings. So right, let's let's go to the breakdown. So let's say in total, I'm getting like thousand euros or less. Sometimes I don't even work up to 10 hours in a week. Sometimes I, I work like eight hours in a week and I, I earn around 300 and something euros so most of the time i'm earning my total money i'm getting in a month from the international center that's 500 euros and for my part-time job can be range, ranging from 300 to 500 euros and from my salary i pay um pension that's around 34 euros so end of the month let's say averagely i'm getting like 
800 and something euros good so let's go to my expenses so the rent like accommodation is one of the major factors in um accommodation is one of the major like expenditure right because you need it you need somewhere to sleep and um in germany they have student accommodation that are like very affordable if you're in a student accommodation you don't pay like energy bills or heating because everything is included for me i am paying around 218 euros per month and this includes energy heating internet and everything that's what i'm paying for my my rent and then as an international student you need to have um, health insurance is very very important so in germany we either have the public um, health insurance or the private health insurance so me i am using the public health insurance and um which is more costly compared to the private health insurance so with the public insurance i'm using the ACA and it costs around 113 euros so i'm paying 113 euros for health insurance every month but for private health insurance could range between 30 to 60 euros depending on what kind of insurance you want to use so what's the difference between this public and private health insurance maybe i should make a video about this but i can give you like a brief explanation so with the public health insurance when you go to the hospital you don't have to pay anything at all like everything is your insurance covers everything but with the private insurance it might not cover everything Some, sometimes you have to pay and the insurance will now like you have to take receipts and show it to your insurance company and they would pay back but with the public you don't have to do all these things and you are sure that with public insurance you are very sure that it's going to cover everything right yeah good so after paying your rent and health insurance you also have to pay radio bills <laughs> so this is the most annoying bill like for me radio bills because i don't i don't even have a radio i don't have a tv i don't watch anything i don't use that. <laughs> but you have to pay radio bills because it's very it's, eh. hmm. so the radio bill per month is 17.50 cents euros per month but i pay every three months accumulated so every three months i pay around 50 something euros every month good we have to put all these down oops oops I need to take a paper okay good so as i said my rent is 218 plus health insurance 113 plus and um, radio bill 17.5 euros good so after that so we're going to put everything together to know how much i spend averagely in a month so this uh, radio bills i'm talking about is the most annoying bills to pay in germany because like as i said you don't care if you use it or not you have to pay this radio bill includes like the radio thing includes like your tv stations and your radio stations thing it doesn't matter if you don't use it you still have to pay and if you don't know and you don't pay this radio bill come on like though you know what they do about the radio bill is they send you like your bill every month like a letter if you keep ignoring it you get a fine it has happened to me <laughs> It happened to me. I had to pay a fine and pay all like the auto was owing. I was owing around two hundred and something euros plus a fine, and I have to pay. So nowadays, as soon as I see radio bill, I just pay like sharp, sharp. I don't want any troubles. And if they send a warning letter, first one, and you don't pay attention to it, and a second, third time, you go to court, and that's like a very big deal. This place, you can't escape anything because they have your information. So, as, so far as you are registered in the Auslander and the immigration, they have everything Everything you do. You can't escape any, can't escape any bill, right? So, yeah, take note, take note of this radio bill. <clears throat> but I also know that for this radio bill, um, if, especially if you are in a student hostel, um, you could share with your flatmates. But me, I don't share with anybody. I pay alone. I don't know how come, but I just pay alone. But some people split it like on the on your your floor members some people split it and they pay together so if you're a student you can do that so after paying health insurance rent and radio bill what's next hmm. the other expenses like your food so now food is very food is not as actually germany is one of the most affordable like western countries to live in terms of food food is not so costly so now if you if you stick to eating like german foods you really save a lot of money but most of us from Africa or India or you know other countries, we are not so used to eating like German foods. You want to try our local foods. Now these local foods are very expensive. So for me, I say I could spend more than a hundred euros on food. So let's say one fifty euros on food. Let's just say averagely, 
I spend like 150 euros on food because sometimes you don't feel like cooking and you want to order food or something like this, you know. As a student, you are working, you are going to school, you are going to class, you have to come back here and cook for yourself. It's so stressful. Sometimes you just want to order food. But one thing is, I know that <clears throat> cooking for yourself saves money than like trying to buy food every day from outside. That's very costly. So for me, I'm in the university like most of the week and I take my lunch in the university. And averagely, when I buy a lunch, it's between 350 euros to 4 euros. Our lunch, like in the university, the, the lunch we have there is kind of very affordable. So when you're going for lunch, you just have to show your student card and then you pay. So lunch in the university costs between 3.5 to 4 euros. So after, you know, after the food cost, the other miscellaneous things you could spend on sometimes you have unbudgeted costs sometimes something will just happen and you just have to you know you need something maybe your soap is finished your pomade is finished all those things right once in a while your toothpaste all these things are costs that you think like oh they're not really, they're really adding up to your cost like so so you can let's say let's budget miscellaneous 50 euros two plus 15 so, averagely, this is what, like, a student could spend, right? As I said, this one would depend from school to school. Because me, I live in Kiel, and the student accommodation here is are quite affordable. Let's say if you live in Berlin or Munich, those places are very, are kind of expensive. So, expect to spend more than this. So, I'm going to sum up this. So, my rent, 218 plus, got insurance, 113 plus... Radio bill 17.5 plus food 115 plus miscellaneous 15. So, averagely, I'm spending around 548 euros per month. It could be more, it could be less, depending, depending on how you spend. Probably, I can spend 150 euros of food. Probably, you will spend like 200 or even less than or 100 euros of food. So as I said, this cost of living is going to vary from person to person, right? And also, usually, um, to be honest with you, since I started schooling here, I've never bought any book, let's say a textbook or what. Um, nah, like my, my program, I can find a lot of things online to study. Library, of course, there are a lot of books in the library. I never have the, I've never faced any challenge of buying any book like that. No, no, no. I've never like bought a book like that. So yeah. So maybe you could also buy maybe some programs. I know they have to buy like textbooks and stuff. I don't have that experience. As I said, I've never bought any book. Yeah, so uh so you guys as I'm talking to you now, I must work working. This is a Saturday and also your girl has to make money or more. Yeah, so this is the five hundred and forty-eight. Averagely, I would say this is how much I spend or more. I think sometimes I even spend more than that because sometimes <clears throat> I have siblings at home and I want to send them something, you know, just to, as a big sister that I am, first born girl, I want to like, oh, let me send this or something. Sometimes you send money home and stuff like this. And yeah, as I said, for international students, it's not really easy for us. It's not easy. International students everywhere, taking care of yourself, we, we, we are doing so well. Like sometimes you go through a lot. Sometimes you go through hard times and you are the only one, like, you know, you're the only one in the room. Take you have to if when you're sick, you don't want to take care of yourself. Like it's not like when you're back at home, you have families around you, you know, cook for you, but you're alone. So international students, big ups to all of you and wishing you guys the very best. I'm going to end this video here. This video is getting too long. So I'm going to end this video here. Thank you so much for watching. See you in, a, in another video. Bye bye.